So now we have the capacity to display descriptions for any items in a given room. And the next step is that we want to be able to interact with them. And the simplest interaction that we're going to allow is going to be the examine interaction. And all that's going to do is display a second description of the object, a little more detailed maybe than the one that you got when you entered the room. So the first thing that we need to do is we need to add a collection of actions to each item. And to do this, we'll create a small serializable class which will be displayed in the inspector of our item. So we're going to create a new script in our scripts folder, which is going to be a C-sharp script, and it's going to be called interaction. And this is just going to be a tiny little data class. We'll open it up. This class, importantly, will not inherit from mono behavior. It is going to be system.serializable. And if you're curious about that, I spent a little time explaining it in the previous session. Uh, so you can double back and check that out. So we are going to delete, start, and update. This is going to execute no functions. All it's going to do is hold data. Now the reason, briefly, that we're making it system.serializable is so that we can display the variables in the inspector in a foldout, right? We want to be able to open up this class and see the stuff inside it in the inspector for our interactable object. So that's why we need the system.serializable attribute. So we are going to add a public input action. So input actions are like go or soon examine we're going to create uh, that we created last time. They're scriptable objects that execute code. This is going to be called input action. And then we're going to add, again, a text area public string called text response. So if the object gives a text response when you examine it, this is going to be the text that it's going to give back to you. OK, and we're going to add one further thing to the interaction later. But for now, we're going to keep it like this. So we can save this. And next, we're going to add a collection of these interaction classes to our interactable object class. So let's go back to interactable object. And here, we're going to add a public array of interactions called interactions. So now, if we save that and return to Unity and look at our skull, we can see that we have, let's add one object to it, we have this. We can unfold the element and see the variables. We have a field for an input action, and then we have a field for the text response. We can fill in the text response. We can say the skull is blackened and charred. Gross. And now we need an input action to put into that field. So the input action that we're going to create is going to be examine. And in order to do this, we're going to build a dictionary of strings for each action that gives a string response so that we can pass in a string, in this case, the name of the object, the skull, to, for example, the examine dictionary, which we're going to create now. And then it's going to take that noun, the skull, as a key and spit back out a text response. In this case, the, the text response that you get when you examine the skull. So in order for the examine to display its response, we're going to need to create a dictionary of strings, which we're going to fill with nouns and description responses. And we're going to do this in our interactable items script. So let's open that. And we're going to add, we'll put it up at the top because it's going to be public. Remember, dictionaries we don't need to hide because they can't be displayed in the inspector. Uh, Unity does not serialize dictionaries because it's an unordered collection. We're going to have examine dictionary. It, so it's going to be a public dictionary. The key is going to be a string. And then the value that it's going to give back is going to be a string. And it's going to be called examine dictionary. And then it's going to be a new dictionary of strings. 
So we're going to populate this dictionary when we are unpacking the room. So we're going to add some code to prepare in the game controller. So let's go back to the game controller. And in our prepare function, we are going to do the following. We are going to add an interactable object, which is going to be called interactable in room. This is going to be equal to current room dot interactable objects in room i. So again, this is just we're just sort of caching this value so that we don't have to type the long name and we don't get confused with a bunch of nested loops because we're going to have another for loop inside our first one. So we're going to use j this time for our iterator name, and this is going to loop over. Interact no, not interface interactable in room dot interactions dot length. So we're doing one loop to get all of the interactable objects, and then on each of those interactable objects, we're drilling down into them and looping over their interactions. Right? So we have rooms with interactable objects inside them, and then interactable objects have interactions inside them. So we need to do nested loops to go through everything. Okay, so now I'm going to, again, just make, let's move this up so I can see it better. We're gonna make a interaction variable, which is gonna be called, which is gonna be equal to interactable in room dot interactions j. Right, doing the same thing that we did up here, just making our code a little easier to read by making a temporary variable there. And then with that interaction, we're going to say if interaction dot input action dot keyword equals examine. So you may or may not remember from last time that each of our input actions has a keyword, and that is going to be what matches to the player input to see if we need to execute that action. Let's just jump back to Unity for a second. If we look at our one already existing input action, go, we see it has a keyword field for a string go. So if I type go space north, then I can go north, right? So it's looking for go in order to respond to that input. So now we're checking against that in our script, say, okay, if the keyword for this is examine, then what we're going to do is we're going to add it to our examine dictionary. So we're going to say interactable items dot examine dictionary dot add and we're going to add in the interactable in room dot noun. So the object noun, right? In this case, skull. So we're going to say, okay, if you pass skull to the examine dictionary, then you are going to get back interaction dot text response, right? Which is that text that we just typed in the field. So we're going to pass in the noun, the name of the object, skull, to the examine dictionary, and it's going to check inside it and then say, oh, yes, I do have a response for skull in my examine dictionary and give back that text response. So right now what we're doing is we're unpacking everything in the room and putting them into the dictionary so that they're ready to respond. Okay, so now we have all the possible nouns and descriptions for examine. So far we only have one, right, but that's okay. Now when we want to examine something, we're going to need a function to check if that noun is in our examine dictionary before we attempt to retrieve it, right? So we need to check the dictionary and say, okay, the player is trying to examine something. Do you have this something in the examine dictionary? If so, let's do something. Otherwise, let's give back a negative response, right? So we're going to add a function, and we'll add this below our prepare function. And this is going to be a public function that returns a string, and it's going to be called test verb dictionary with noun. And so this, we're going to use this for more than just examine. We're going to use it for take as well. Basically, when we want to find out if it's possible to examine an object, we're going to say, okay, take a look in the examine dictionary and see if that object is in there. So we, this is going to take as parameters a dictionary of strings, 
which we'll call verb dictionary. And then it's also going to take a string for the verb and a string called noun. What are we going to do with this, you ask? We are going to check if verb dictionary dot contains key noun, right? So is the noun that we're looking for, is it in the examine dictionary? Is it in the take dictionary? If it is, then we're going to return the value that's stored there. We're going to return verb dictionary noun. So whatever value we have corresponding to the key noun is now going to get returned as a string to whatever called test verb dictionary. If it's not in the dictionary, then we're going to return a kind of an error message to the player. We're going to say return you can't space plus verb plus quotes space plus noun. So you can't do that, right? Good. Save that. Now, we're going to create the examine action, which is going to call this function. So we're kind of building our structure so that we can now do the examine action and call these functions. So we're going to control shift S to save everything. And then we're going to return to unity and we're going to select our scripts folder, right click, create C sharp script, examine. So examine is going to be an input action like go. So examine, it's not going to be a mono behavior. It's going to inherit from input action. And because it inherits from input action, it's going to override the respond to input function. So if we type public override, and then we can autocomplete respond to input. So respond to input takes a game controller, which is going to be our controller. And then it takes a string array called separated input words. So when we get input from the player, we slice it into separate words in the array. And now we're going to pass that through to our examine action when we try to examine something. So this is also going to have the, the create asset menu attribute. And the menu name for this is going to be text adventure input actions examine. And in our respond to input function, what we're going to do is we're going to try to log the text response from the examine dictionary into our action log if it works, right? Otherwise, we're going to log that error that we set up or the, the negative response, right? It's not actually an error. It's just that you can't do that. So we're going to call from the controller. We're going to call controller.logstring with return, right? So we're definitely going to log something. Uh, the question is what? And then we're going to call controller.testverbdictionary with noun, and we're going to pass in controller dot interactable items dot examine dictionary. Then we're going to pass in separated input word zero for the verb. This is mainly for the error message and separated input for words one for the noun. So we are going to log to the console either you can't verb noun or the text response from our interactable object. Okay, Let's save that. Control Shift S to save everything. Before testing in the editor, we also need to make sure that we're cleaning up our room before we move to another room. So in the interactable items script, we're just gonna add a simple public function, which is gonna be called clear collections. And this is just going to call examine dictionary dot clear and nouns in room dot clear, right? We want to clear the collections every time we change rooms because we're going to rebuild the collections when we enter a new room. So we're going to clear everything out to get ready to display the next room. And then we just need to call, uh, this is a public function that returns void, excuse me. Save. We just need to call this from game controller. So in game controller, we have a 
similar clear collections function going on. And so all we're going to do here is we're just going to say interactable items dot clear collections as well. So at the same time, we're going to clear out the exits, the descriptions, and the items. All right. Now we can return to Unity and set this up. So we are going to now create the scriptable object asset for our examine input action. So we're going to go to input actions in our scriptable objects folder, create, text adventure, input actions, examine. I'm going to call it examine. Don't forget to put in the keyword, right? And then we need to add this to the game controller. So in the game controller, we have an array of input actions. Now we're going to drag in examine is now one of our possible actions that we can perform. In the skull, we also need to add the input action, right? So now the input action for interaction zero is going to be examine, and this is going to be the response. Okay, that should be good. Let's play. So we enter the room. There's the skull. We type examine skull. The skull is blackened and charred. Gross. And it works. So now we have the capacity to display item descriptions, examine items, with our new input action examine. And the next step is going to be to allow players to take items. So we're gonna build on, we're gonna use almost all of the functionality we created for examine, for take, but take is also gonna to need to manipulate the inventory and the list of objects, right? So it's gonna do everything that examine did and also a little bit more.